Shield your shine. Self-care, when toxic people are unavoidable. Published by Flow With Life. Introduction. Imagine a vibrant flower, full of color and life. Now, picture that flower getting battered by harsh winds and heavy rain all the time. Eventually, the colors start to fade, the leaves wilt, and that once strong flower starts to struggle. Toxic relationships can do the same to us. They wear us down, chip away at our confidence, and leave us feeling completely drained. The worst part is, we can't always control who's in our lives. Sometimes those toxic people are family, co-workers, or even friends. And sometimes, you might even start to question yourself. You might wonder if you're the problem, if maybe you're just too sensitive. But this book is your way to change that. It's permission to put your well-being first, even when those circumstances feel impossible to change. We're going to teach you how to set boundaries that protect you, ways to detach from all that negativity, and how to take care of yourself so you can shine again. It's time to stop letting toxic people dim your light. It's time to rediscover your strength and create a life where you thrive, no matter who else is around. Chapter 1. Understanding the Toxic Landscape The energy drain. You know that feeling? You're having a perfectly good day. Maybe even a great one. Then you bump into a certain coworker, relative, or maybe a friend. It's a short interaction, nothing major, yet afterwards, ugh. Suddenly you feel totally drained. There's this heavy feeling that just won't go away. It's more than just what they said. It's how they make you feel like they've just sucked all the energy right out of you. If this sounds familiar, you're definitely not alone. Toxic people have this weird superpower. They can dim our light with just a few words, a sideways glance, or even just being around them. So what is toxicity? Let's be clear. We're not talking about someone just having a bad day or being a bit grumpy. Toxic behavior is a whole different beast. It's a consistent pattern of words and actions designed to chip away at your emotional well-being. To help you spot these toxic patterns, here are some of the classic red flags to watch out for. First up, let's talk about the master manipulator. They use sneaky ways to twist your words, play on your guilt, or act like the victim to get what they want. Somehow, even when they're totally wrong, they flip it around and make you feel like the bad guy. Next, beware of the drain of negativity. They're like a bottomless pit of criticism and complaints, a human rain cloud. No bit of good news is ever good enough. Watch out for gaslighting games. They try to twist your reality, denying things they said or did. They'll make you question your own memories and start to doubt your sanity. Finally, there's the lack of empathy. They seem incapable of understanding how you feel or putting themselves in your shoes. And keep in mind, these are just a few of the most common types of toxic people. There are many variations on this theme, all with the same goal, to drag you down. The toll it takes. Dealing with a toxic person isn't a little annoyance. It's like a constant slow drip, taking a toll on your mental, emotional, and even your physical health. You might start to notice things like increased anxiety, feeling down on yourself, maybe even full-on depression. Stress can show up in strange ways. Headaches, sleep problems, unexplained aches and pains. All this stress can spill over, making it harder to fully be present with the good people in your life or making you too afraid to set boundaries. It can be really tough to admit someone you care about, or someone you have to see all the time, might be toxic. We all have bad days, but with a toxic person, negativity becomes their normal setting. So, how do you know if you're dealing with true toxicity? Ask yourself, do I secretly dread seeing this person? Do I feel like I have to walk on eggshells around them, always watching what I say? Do I keep replaying conversations with them, feeling confused or doubting myself? Does their bad mood rub off on me and stick with me even when I'm not around them? If the answer to those questions is yes, then it's time to start protecting your well-being. Why can't I just ignore them? Unfortunately, our brains are wired to notice threats and dwell on the negative. 
Even if you know you should just brush it off, your emotions might not listen. Plus, if you happen to be an empathetic person, you might end up absorbing their bad energy like a sponge. Here's the good news. Recognizing the problem is the first huge step to protecting yourself. In the chapters ahead, we're going to build your defenses, learn how to shut down their toxic tactics, and help you reclaim your energy. Chapter 2. Boundary Boot Camp Imagine boundaries like a suit of armor, protecting your well-being against the onslaught of toxic interactions. While we can't control someone else's behavior, we absolutely can control how much it affects us. This chapter is about stepping into your own power and defining what you will and won't tolerate. The Power of Boundaries Boundaries aren't just about saying no. They're about declaring what you value and standing up for your right to be treated with respect. When you consistently uphold your boundaries, you'll experience some amazing benefits. First, your self-respect skyrockets. Each time you enforce a boundary, you're telling yourself and others that you are worthy. This starts to become a powerful inner belief. Next, you become more resilient. Toxic people lose their power over you when you stop letting them walk all over you. You build up that inner strength that helps you handle difficult situations. Finally, boundaries create clear communication. Instead of stewing in resentment, you learn to express your needs directly. This can actually lead to healthier relationships all around. Identifying your boundary battlegrounds. Think about the interactions that linger negatively in your mind. Where do you feel drained, resentful, or taken advantage of? Let's pinpoint those areas. Identifying your boundary battlegrounds. Let's zero in on the common situations where those toxic interactions leave you feeling drained, resentful, or taken advantage of. To get you started, think about this. Do they use you as their personal therapist, constantly unloading their problems and negativity but never offering support in return? Time for an energy boundary. Maybe they overshare, revealing overly personal details about themselves that make you uncomfortable or expect you to do the same. Sounds like you need stronger emotional boundaries. Or perhaps they make constant demands on your time and energy, expecting you to be at their beck and call. You definitely need clearer time boundaries. Creating powerful boundaries is all about clarity and specificity. Start by being direct. Instead of vague pleas for space, try, please text before dropping by, or I'm not available to discuss work after 6 p.m. Saying your boundaries out loud to yourself or a supportive friend helps them feel more natural when you need to use them. Remember, toxic people thrive on pushing your limits. Expect some resistance. They might try to minimize your boundaries or make you feel guilty. Hold firm. Consistency is your superpower when it comes to enforcing your boundaries. Try calm and clear repetition. I'm not going to engage in this conversation, or I'm not available right now. Don't over-explain or let them pull you into an argument. Sometimes the best way to enforce a boundary is through action, physically removing yourself, setting your phone to silent, or changing the subject. This shows you're serious. Most importantly, remember that boundaries are about protecting yourself, not about punishing the other person. Disengage without drama and focus on maintaining your own inner peace. Self-compassion is key. This takes practice, especially if you tend to put others first. Be kind to yourself. Each time you voice a boundary, you're making a powerful choice for your own well-being. Coming up next. Now that you understand boundaries, Chapter 3 will teach you how to emotionally detach. Imagine their toxic words and actions rolling off you like water off a duck's back. Chapter 3. The Art of Emotional Detachment Think of emotional detachment as a shield for your inner peace. Sure, the toxic person's words and actions might still happen, but they'll lose their power to hurt you. This chapter is about reclaiming your emotional control so you can walk away from those draining interactions feeling grounded, not depleted. Detachment versus Dissociation – Finding the Balance it's crucial to understand that emotional detachment isn't about becoming numb or unfeeling. 
Dissociation is like your mind automatically hitting the emergency stop button. Detachment is a conscious choice. You're still aware of what's happening, but you refuse to let it destabilize you. It's about watching a storm pass from a safe, sheltered place instead of being right in the middle of it. Why detachment is so hard? We're naturally empathetic creatures. It's hard not to absorb the negativity of others. Plus, toxic people are skilled at pushing our buttons. We might also slip into old habits of taking their negativity personally, feeling guilty, or trying to reason with the unreasonable. Changing these ingrained patterns takes time and conscious effort. Mindfulness. Your detachment. Superpower. Mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment without judgment. It's your secret weapon for separating yourself from the emotional chaos. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. Step 1. Tune into your body. When you feel that familiar tension rising, do a body scan. Are you clenching your jaw, holding your breath, or feeling flushed? Simply noticing these physical sensations creates a bit of distance and starts to break their control over you. Step 2. Observe your emotions. Instead of spiraling into anger, frustration, or self-doubt, try simply labeling the feeling. There is sadness here, or I'm feeling a tightness in my chest. This simple act can reduce their emotional intensity. Step 3. Witness your thoughts. Our minds race. They always ruin everything, or, I'm not good enough. Catch these thoughts and see them for what they are, just thoughts, not absolute truths. Perspective shifts, reframing for freedom. Here are some mental shifts to help you detach and see things differently. It's not about you. Toxic people often act out due to their own insecurities. You're not the cause of their behavior, and you don't have to take it on. Picture their pain. It's not about excusing them, but imagining them as emotionally wounded can shift your focus from defensiveness to compassion. From a safe distance, of course. Choose your energy. Imagine their negativity as this heavy weight. Do you want to keep carrying it or consciously set it down? Combining techniques for maximum impact. Setting a boundary. I need to step away from this right now becomes even more powerful when you pair it with detachment techniques. You're removing yourself both physically and emotionally. Detachment is a skill you build over time. The more you practice, the easier it becomes to protect your inner peace. Next up, Chapter 4 will give you essential self-care strategies to nurture yourself, building a strong foundation for handling those difficult interactions. Chapter 4 Building your resilience toolkit. You've mastered boundaries and detachment. That's huge. Now, let's build you an inner sanctuary, a beautiful garden within yourself that can weather any storm. This chapter is all about self care practices that restore your spirit and give you the strength to handle toxic situations. Let's talk about what happens when we face those toxic interactions. Our brains and bodies go into survival mode which is great if we're facing actual danger, but being constantly triggered throws everything out of balance. Our sleep, our mood, even our ability to make good decisions. This is where self-care becomes your secret weapon. Sure, stress relief makes you feel good in the moment, but it does way more than that. It actually trains your nervous system to handle difficult situations better. Here's where to start. Even a short walk, a quick dance session, or some simple yoga stretches can do wonders. It gets those feel-good chemicals flowing and releases built-up tension. Techniques like deep belly breaths or box breathing, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, have an amazing calming effect. Guided meditations are great, but even just pausing to notice your senses without judgment can pull you out of your racing thoughts and into the present moment. Toxic people can make us our own worst enemies. We start listening to that harsh inner critic, believing all the negativity. Self-compassion is how you fight back. Would you talk to a friend the way you sometimes talk to yourself? Give yourself the same kindness you'd offer someone you care about. Everyone makes mistakes. Instead of dwelling on them, focus on what you can learn for the future. 
replenishing your energy. Well, true resilience isn't just about surviving, it's also about finding joy and feeling whole. So let's figure out what really fills your cup. Ask yourself, what makes me feel happy, peaceful, and energized? Prioritize those activities and experiences. Here's some inspiration to get you thinking, whether it's painting, writing, playing music, or even just doodling. Let your inner artist out to play. Creativity is a wonderful way to quiet that inner critic and tap into pure joy. Spending time with those supportive friends and family who make you feel seen and valued, that's pure nourishment for your soul. Taking a walk in nature, listening to beautiful music, or even just stargazing for a few minutes. Finding those moments of awe can shift your perspective and renew your spirit. Self-care isn't a luxury. It's like putting high-quality fuel in your tank. So, how do you make it a regular part of your life? The key is consistency. Even five minutes of meditation or a short walk makes a difference. Don't underestimate those little moments. Treat your self-care time with the same importance as any work meeting. It's a non-negotiable appointment with yourself. Some days you'll have energy for a full workout. Others, a few stretches are all you need. Listen to your body and honor what it's asking for. Ready to turn these ideas into a powerful daily practice? Here's your challenge. Choose three stress relief techniques that appeal to you, three activities that bring you true joy, and three self-compassion phrases to combat that inner critic. Aim to do at least one thing from your list each day. Notice how even small acts of self-care shift your mood and build your inner strength. Up next, in Chapter 5, we'll explore how to create a healthy support system and set loving boundaries even within those close relationships. Chapter 5. Creating a Nurturing Support System We've built a strong set of internal tools to deal with toxic individuals, but the truth is, none of us are meant to go through life alone. This chapter is about finding those special people who truly nourish your well-being and also learning to set healthy boundaries even within those supportive relationships. Take a moment to think about your existing relationships and notice the difference between the people who leave you feeling uplifted, heard, and optimistic, your energizers, and those with whom you can be your complete, unfiltered self, your safe spaces. Then there are your cheerleaders, who celebrate your successes, believe in you, and remind you of your worth. Not everyone is lucky enough to already have a strong support system. If that's you, don't despair. Here's how to expand your circle. Join clubs, groups, or even online communities that share your passions. Shared interests are a great starting point for friendships. Be open to making new friends. Sometimes sharing a bit of your own struggles attracts those who understand and can offer genuine support. A therapist isn't just for crisis moments. They offer skilled support and can guide your self-care and personal growth in powerful ways. Even the most loving relationships can sometimes feel draining. Remember, everyone has their own needs and limits. Even the most supportive friend might reach their limit with constant venting, so be honest if you need to shift the conversation. It's okay to say no to favors, even if it's someone you love. My plate is full is a perfectly valid response. Be mindful of oversharing your struggles with those who might worry excessively or lack the emotional bandwidth to truly be there for you. Sometimes, even those who care about us can accidentally say hurtful things. Look out for unsolicited advice. If you're just venting, make that clear. Minimizing your struggles. It's not that bad which invalidates your feelings, or toxic positivity that forces cheerfulness or guilt. Even the most well-intentioned people can't read your mind. Communicate gently but directly. I love spending time with you, but sometimes I need a break to recharge. Or, I appreciate your solutions, but today, I need more of a listening ear. Sometimes, even with effort, a relationship remains draining. It's okay to lovingly create distance, prioritize healthier connections, or seek professional guidance if you're dealing with complex family dynamics. A healthy support network makes you infinitely stronger when dealing with toxic individuals. Prioritize those who truly lift you up, 
and don't hesitate to set boundaries with love, even in your closest relationships. Up next, our final chapter will focus on creating a proactive self-care plan to stay strong and making your well-being a non-negotiable priority. Chapter 6. Proactive Protection You survived. You've mastered those boundaries and figured out how to detach from toxic people. Now this final chapter is about taking things to the next level. Let's build you an impenetrable fortress of well-being, a shield against those energy-sucking encounters. Ready to make yourself truly untouchable? Let's start by pinpointing your weak spots. What topics always leave you feeling drained? Politics, money, maybe even your job. And which behaviors get under your skin most? Criticism, playing the victim, those guilt-tripping sighs. Maybe you're more vulnerable in big groups, after a stressful day, or in a certain person's home. Understanding these triggers is like having a secret weapon. Once you're aware of them, you can start making strategic choices. If possible, skip those triggering conversations or adjust where they happen. Can't be avoided? Get those detachment techniques and boundary phrases ready. And hey, we all get triggered sometimes. Don't beat yourself up. Just remember to give yourself extra TLC afterwards. Now, instead of just putting out fires, let's get proactive about your well-being. Ask yourself, what makes me feel totally peaceful and fills my cup? Prioritize those. A nature walk, bath time, letting your creative side loose, or snuggles with a loved one. What helps me feel strong and grounded? Think affirmations, journaling, therapy, or a sweat session that makes you feel unstoppable. And most importantly, what makes your heart sing with pure joy? Make time for those things, even if it seems silly. Okay, time for your personalized blueprint. How will you start each day with a positive mindset, even if it's just five minutes of meditation or enjoying a mindful cup of coffee? Got a few instant stress busters in your back pocket for when the negativity hits? Think quick breathing exercises a grounding walk, anything that snaps you back to center. Let's not forget an evening wind-down routine to release tension and prep for peaceful sleep. If you find yourself getting overwhelmed, feeling anxious or down, or if past toxic relationships left some deeper scars, don't be afraid to get professional help. A good therapist can be your superpower, providing a safe space to heal and giving you even more tools for thriving. Remember, Protecting your well-being is an ongoing journey. There might be setbacks, so be patient with yourself. Keep coming back to your blueprint, making adjustments as life changes. You deserve joy, peace, and healthy relationships. Keep this book close and let it remind you of that truth. Every boundary you set, every act of self-care, every time you walk away from toxicity, that's when your light shines like never before. Conclusion You survived. You've mastered those boundaries and figured out how to detach from toxic people. Now, this final chapter is about taking things to the next level. Let's build you an impenetrable fortress of well-being, a shield against those energy-sucking encounters. Ready to make yourself truly untouchable? Let's start by pinpointing your weak spots. What topics always leave you feeling drained? Politics? Money? Maybe even your job? Which behaviors get under your skin most? Criticism? Playing the victim? Those guilt-tripping sighs? Maybe you're more vulnerable in big groups, after a stressful day, or in a certain person's home. Understanding these triggers is like having a secret weapon. Once you're aware of them, you can start making strategic choices. If possible, skip those triggering conversations or adjust where they happen. Can't be avoided? Get those detachment techniques and boundary phrases ready. And hey, we all get triggered sometimes. Don't beat yourself up. Just remember to give yourself extra TLC afterwards. Now, instead of just putting out fires, let's get proactive about your well being. Ask yourself What makes me feel totally peaceful and fills my cup? Prioritize those a nature walk, bath time, letting your creative side loose or snuggles with a loved one. What helps me feel strong and grounded? Think affirmations, 
journaling, therapy, or a sweat session that makes you feel unstoppable? And most importantly, what makes your heart sing with pure joy? Make time for those things, even if it seems silly. Okay, time for your personalized blueprint. How will you start each day with a positive mindset, even if it's just five minutes of meditation or enjoying a mindful cup of coffee? Got a few instant stress busters in your back pocket for when the negativity hits? Think quick breathing exercises, a grounding walk, anything that snaps you back to center. Let's not forget an evening wind-down routine to release tension and prep for peaceful sleep. If you find yourself getting overwhelmed, feeling anxious or down, or if past toxic relationships left some deeper scars, don't be afraid to get professional help. A good therapist can be your superpower, providing a safe space to heal and giving you even more tools for thriving. Remember, protecting your well-being is an ongoing journey. There might be setbacks, so be patient with yourself. Keep coming back to your blueprint, making adjustments as life changes. You deserve joy, peace, and healthy relationships. Keep this book close and let it remind you of that truth. Every boundary you set, every act of self-care, every time you walk away from toxicity, that's when your light shines like never before.